Um, so we did octahedral. Octahedral, there's six ligands. They're all at 90 degrees to each other. But that's not the only shape that a transition metal can have. There's going to be four shapes that I want you to know. You know one of the four right now. Let's go towards the other four. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is the tetrahedral shape. probably remember that from your first Gen Chem course. That's the one that everything has a 109.5 degree bond angle. Um, it looks like this. Two of the ligands will be in the plane. One will come out at you, and to illustrate that, I draw a wedge. And that means it's coming out of the board. The other one will go into the board away from you. So two ligands uh, are not in the plane, meaning come, one's coming at you, one's going away from you, the other two are in the plane. That's tetrahedral shape. Now, you want to go back in your notes or in your mind to the d orbitals. And remember the same concept as we did before. If a ligand hits an orbital, that's high energy. And so, we'll put a high, if it does not hit the orbital, it's low energy. Well, so I think the easiest way to think of the tetrahedral, pretty much all the ligands on the tetrahedral are off-axis. So tetrahedral ligands are off-axis, and that's the key point that you want to remember. They're not on the x, y, z axis. They're sprawled out. So if you take a look at the d orbital, let me zoom out here so you can see all of them. Okay, you want to, you're starting to think, well, if they're off axis, then every d orbital that's an off axis d orbital will be high energy. And that's these three on the left. These are going to be our high energy d orbitals now. The ones on the right, your on axis d orbitals, those are going to be the low energy because, again, the ligands are coming in for the tetrahedral. Uh, off axis. So they're not going to bump into the axis or these two, but they are going to bump into these three because these are off axis and the ligands are coming in off axis. So what does that mean for the picture? Well, what you're going to notice is that it'll look exactly the opposite of the octahedral picture. Where the dz squared and dx squared minus y squared are low energy, and the dxy, the dyz, and the dxz are high energy. So, if you remember the octahedral, this is totally the opposite. Now, this difference here is delta. This delta is not equal to the other delta. This is a delta for tetrahedral, the other one's a delta for octahedral, but it's still called delta. Okay, so there's the tetrahedral shape. Two more to go. Next one we'll do uh, is a little more crazy. It's the square, uh, yeah, let's do the square planar next. Square planar. Okay, if you forgot what the square planar looks like, it looks a uh, as follows. If I draw the uh, metal in the middle, we've got ligands here and ligands here. It looks like a square and it's flat. And this lies on the x, y axis. So the ligands are on the x and the y axis in this case. So we want to remember that as we're going to draw our picture now. If the ligands are on the x, y axis, which d orbital will it bump into first? That's how you want to think. Well, uh, I think it would be this one, because this one lies on the x, y axis. And so this is going to be the highest energy d orbital. Let's draw that one first. Get something on the board here. So the highest energy is the dx squared minus y squared. That's the highest energy. What's the next highest? 
Well, uh, we want to see what else has an xy component, or has stuff on the xy plane. The only other one that has stuff on both the x and the, or the next one that has the most stuff on the xy plane is this one. It's not on an axis, but it has stuff on that plane. So it will be some slight bumpage and repulsion with this one. So the next one will be the dxy. Okay, what's the next one? Well, next, you might not think of this one initially, but the, the next one that actually has stuff on the xy plane is the dz squared. It has a donut on the xy plane. There's a donut sitting there. It kind of encircles around that thing that looks like a p orbital. And that donut has some xy um, pool, uh, stuff. <laughs> xy uh, electrons in the xy orbital plane, so it's the dz squared. And I've actually seen these two kind of vary sometimes depending on the uh, uh, molecule, but we'll learn it as this way. And then what else is left? Well, the only two left is the dxz and uh, the dyz, the yz and xz. Well, those two are kind of equally on the x and y axis. So they're going to be the lowest energy ones and they'll be the same energy. Because this has one component on the y-axis, this has one component on the x-axis. So, it'll look like this. And again, these two here at the bottom, it doesn't matter what order you write them. And so it looks like a tower, like the Eiffel Tower or something. And here, delta is here. Again, different delta, it's a square planar delta, but it's still called delta. So that's the next diagram you need to know, the square planet. Finally, the last one that you'll need to know is the linear. And that's where it's in a line. So you got ligands coming in. And in this case, when, when it's linear, they come in on the z-axis. So we're talking about the z-axis here. Um, so let's draw this out. So if ligands are coming in on the z-axis, you want to see, okay, what are they going to interact with first? Well, the one that's right on the z-axis is the dz squared. So that'll be the highest energy, the dz squared. What's the next highest? Well, what else has a z component? Well, the dyz and the dxz equally have half of a z component. So there will be equally the next highest, or the next lowest energy. So there's a dxz has a half of a z component, and the dyz has a partial z component as well. OK, which two are left? Two more, or there's five d orbitals. The two that are left are the dxy and the dx squared minus y squared. They have zero z component. And so they are equally the lowest energy because there's no z component whatsoever.
the d orbitals you also have to remember. So yeah, you won't be given the d orbitals on the exam either. So you got to know what they look like and you need to know their names okay. uh, of each of them.